What preceded the strike that the nuclear workers witnessed? And could it have been avoided? Who was to blame? These questions were actively debated both immediately after the accident and two decades later. There are two camps of irreconcilable opponents. The first maintains that the main cause of the accident was design flaws in the reactor and an imperfect protective system. The second one blames the operators and points to their unprofessionalism and poor safety culture. Both have weighty arguments in the form of expert opinions and conclusions of all kinds of expert reviews and commissions. As a rule, the version about the human factor is put forward by designers defending the honor of the uniform. They are opposed by the operators, who are no less interested in saving face. Let's try to break down the third, independent camp between them and assess causes and effects from the outside. The reactor installed at the 4th unit of the CHNPP was designed in the 60s by the Nikki of Power Engineering of the USSR Ministry of Medium Machine Building, and the scientific leadership was provided by the Kurchatov Institute of Nuclear Power Engineering. Kurchatov Institute of Nuclear Power Engineering. It was named RBMK-1000, high-power channel-type reactor of 1000 electric megawatts. It uses graphite as the moderator and water as the coolant. The fuel is uranium compressed into pellets and placed in fuel elements made of uranium dioxide and zirconium shells. The energy of the nuclear reaction heats the water that is piped in, the water boils, the steam is separated and fed to the turbine. The turbine rotates and generates much-needed electricity for the country. CHNPP was the third plant to install this type of reactor, before that, it made the Kursk and Leningrad NPPs happy. It was a time of economy earlier, the USSR and the entire world used reactors encased in heavy-duty alloys. The RBMK had no such protection, which made it possible to save significantly on construction, alas, at the expense of safety. In addition, it was possible to reload fuel on it without stopping, which also promised considerable benefits. The reactor was based on a military reactor that produced weapons-grade plutonium for defense purposes. It had an inherent defect in the form of the very rods that regulate the chain reaction, they are too slow to enter the reactor core, 18 seconds instead of the required 3 seconds. As a result, the reactor gets too much time for self-dispersal of instantaneous neutrons, which the rods are designed to absorb. In addition, during the construction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, to save concrete, the height of the sub-reactor room was reduced by 2 meters, as a result of which the rod's length was also reduced from 7 to 4 meters. But the most important flaw in the protection was the complete ignorance of the designers of the impact of steam on the reactor power. In its transient modes, the working channels were filled with steam instead of dense water. At that time, it was believed that in this case the power should drop, and there were no reliable calculation programs and possibilities for laboratory experiments. Only much later practice showed that steam gives such a jump in reactivity, and in a few seconds, that the power increases a hundredfold, and the slow regulating rods remain halfway in the moment when the atomic genie is already bursting out of the bottle. Practically no one thought about the possible sad consequences at the time, the idea of absolute safety of nuclear power was advertised by A.P. Alessandrov, the head of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR. None of the scientists dared to seriously argue with him, and only in another department there were people who questioned the competence of the designers and builders of the future largest nuclear power plant. We are talking, of course, about the State Security Committee. Simultaneously with the construction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the city department of the UKGB was deployed in Pripyat. The third division of the 2nd Counterintelligence Directorate was in charge of affairs at the site itself. It was charged with the collection of information on the construction of the station, its operation, employees and possibilities for sabotage and other activities of enemy intelligence. The first document of the department, which had the class analysts, was a reference of September 19, 1971, which evaluated the technical characteristics of the future CHNPP. It noted the lack of experience of the Ministry of Energy in operating such structures, the low level of staff recruitment, shortcomings in the construction. At that time nobody listened to the checkists. 
In 1976 the Kiev administration of the State Security Committee sent a special notification to the authorities of the Ministry of Energy of Ukraine on the systematic violations of the technology of construction and assembling works at certain sections of the construction work. In it there are the murderous data, the technical documentation from the designers is not delivered on time, the welded pipes of Korakovskich KMZ are completely unusable, but are accepted by the station management, the buck and brick for the construction of the premises has a strength two times lower than the standard one, and so on. The concrete for the tank of liquid radioactive waste was laid with irregularities that threatened a leak, and its casing turned out to be deformed. The report ended, as usual, with the imperfection of the protection against possible saboteurs, which was entrusted to retired Vokrov servicemen altogether. But the voice of the shouting Czechist was drowned in the desert of inaction. The first secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine and de facto leader of the Republic Vladimir Skrbetsky reacted to warnings from the chairman of the KGB of the Ukrainian SSR Vitaly Fedorchuk rather weakly and sent another duty commission to the station. Well, by golly, we can't stop the construction because the welding equipment of our Yugoslav friends from Inner Goinvest and Zurad Zurovich turned out to be defective. And the fact that at high temperatures there is a risk of an accident, that's something we have to prove. Meanwhile, in 1983-85, there were five accidents and 63 failures of the basic equipment at Chernobyl NPP. A whole group of KGB workers who had warned of possible consequences were reprimanded for alarmism and misinformation. The last report was dated February 26, 1986, exactly two months before the accident, about the unacceptably low quality of the coverings of Unit 5. There were warnings from scientists as well. Professor Dubovsky, one of the best nuclear safety experts in the USSR, warned back in the 1970s about the danger of operating this type of reactor, which was confirmed during the 1975 accident at the Leningrad nuclear power plant. That time it was only by chance that saved the city from disaster. V. P. Volkov from the Institute of Atomic Energy had filled the management team with reports about unreliability of the RBMK protection and proposed measures to improve it. The management took no action. Then the stubborn scientist reached the director of the institute, academician Alexandrov. He appointed an emergency meeting on the issue, which for some reason did not take place. Volkov had nowhere else to turn, because his all-powerful boss was also the head of the Academy of Sciences, i.e. he was the highest scientific authority. Another great opportunity to review the security system was missed. Later, after the accident, Volkov would make his way to Gorbachev with his report and become an outcast in his institute. On March 27, 1986 the newspaper Literaturna Ukraina published an article by Lubov Kovalovskia, not a private affair, that was noticed by very few. Only later would it cause a sensation in the West and serve as proof that the events were not an accident, but meanwhile the young journalist, with the ardor typical of the perestroika years, scolded the careless suppliers, 326 tons of slit coating for the spent nuclear fuel storage facility was received defective from the Volsky Metallostructures plant. Kashinsky ZMK sent about 220 tons of defective columns for the installation of the repository. But it is inadmissible to work like this. Kovalovskia saw the main reason for the accident in the flourishing at the station nepotism and collective bail, in which errors and negligence got away with it. As usual, she was accused of incompetence and the desire to make a name for herself. The adventurous experiment at Block 4 was only weeks away. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.